right, howdy guys, I'm Jeep and Jason, and today on the Auto Edits Jeep, we're gonna be doing some routine maintenance. Now, I've been asked, oh, about eight times over the last five years, how do you change the transmission fluid on the six-speed manual transmission Jeeps? And we're gonna do that today, it's super easy. Um, I understand that it can be a little bit intimidating or overwhelming if you don't know what to anticipate under there. Super straightforward stuff. So let's get started with the tools that you're gonna to need to do this. It doesn't take really much. It's gonna be a 17 millimeter Allen head and a 14 millimeter. That's about it for the tools. And so I just went to Harbor Freight and picked up this socket set right here. It's a nine piece socket set for 12 bucks. So you're not gonna be in it for that much there. And all we're using is these two, but it's, this is a good thing to add to your toolbox. And then the fluid. Now, here's an interesting thing. The Mopar fluid that they want you to use or that they spec to use from this is 32 bucks a quart at the dealer. Now that's steep and I, I, you know, they get you. So I went to my local Napa and I opted for the Royal Purple Synchro Max. This stuff is spec for these vehicles. I actually was looking for the Amsoil. Uh, I'm not sure why, but that brand it has my interest. I couldn't find it locally and I just want to get this done. Like a lot of us, I don't plan ahead and didn't order it. So I picked that up at my Napa for 18 bucks. You'll need some sort of fluid pump. This thing was eight bucks at Napa as well. And it's just something that you're going to need to transfer the fluid from here into the fill port. It's in an awkward spot underneath the transmission tunnel. So you're gonna need something like this. You won't be able to do that from a, a natural pour from the bottle. Then of course you'll need like an oil pan and some, um, some paper towels, things, oil change level stuff for this one. Not very difficult. All right, so let me show you why we have to make a modification to the 17 millimeter uh, Allen key here that just quite won't fit. This is the drain plug for the trans, the manual transmission. It's right here and the exhaust cross pipe, crossover pipe goes right into the just not quite misses by about a half an inch. I could get a straight shot at it. So we're gonna have to make a twist, uh, a quick mod to this. It's one of those things that, you know, they design all this stuff and you know, Jeep, they get this transmission and then the crossover pipe has to go right here. Like here's the, the the cross member right here. And then if it were, if this pipe was any farther forward or any farther down, it would actually hit other stuff. Like, you know, I've hit my skid plate, which normally lives here a lot. So this is just one of those things. And this is not gonna be that big a deal. So like I mentioned a moment ago, uh, I watched a couple videos on what to expect to do this too. So we're all doing the same thing. This is just what inspired me to uh, try to throw my head in the ring to help you guys. Uh, I saw guys cutting these to make this repair and please don't do that. These are tools. You don't have to cut a tool. You can just take your socket and put it in a vise or something that you can like grab the lip of and then just get a screwdriver or a dowel, a, a pin or a punch and just And there you go, it's out. And you can actually just put it back in and reuse this thing. So you don't have to actually ruin the tool. Uh, not that it's still gonna just be dedicated when you're gonna use a 17 millimeter, but there you go. Now we can get underneath there and get some work started. Now it's good to do a little, just knock some of the big chunks of dirt off in this area, obviously. I'm gonna wipe some of the oil that's been kind of dripping down here. And where your fill is, you definitely want to clean that area out. We'll just give this a good scrub in here. Just wipe it down. Just you don't want to get introduce any debris while you're trying to fill it fresh. So before we drain the fluid out of this, and this is just general advice on any type of service you're gonna do to like the differentials or the transfer cases, you always just want to undo the fill plug first because if for whatever reason something goes wrong and that's stripped, there's no point in draining it because you're gonna have to figure out a plan B because if you can't fill it, you're kind of uh, incapacitated. So always go for the fill first. And so we'll just get this loosened up. Okay, we are loose. So let me do it a quick, I gotta admit a little bit. Forums are a, pl a good place and also a scary place. I got myself into trouble when I first owned this, went to forums, learned a bunch of junk. One of the good things was that in 2013, a bunch of JKs left the factory with only a half a quart of 
uh, trans fluid in here and uh, that's not ideal. That's not great. And this Jeep was one of them. I actually took this off, found that this thing was almost empty, put it a quart and a half in. And then I learned on the forum that if you tip the Jeep, like jack up this side of the Jeep, you could overfill it a little bit. And that's exactly how I just got into trouble by have the, having this thing blow out the breather vent. You don't need to overfill it. I, at the time it made sense. They said that it gives you better shifting and better lubrication. Just don't believe everything you read on those things. <laughs> This is, uh, just fill it to what it, the spec says. It says you know, anywhere between 1.6 to two quarts is all this thing should take. So that's what we're gonna refill this thing to. But you can see that it, it equalized itself over <laughs> my last several, several years of driving. And this is also one of those things, 30,000 miles that the book says to do this. Now it's time to drain the fluid and that is where we will take our custom Allen key, put that in there hopefully it is not as hard to me and then we'll just take a 17 millimeter wrench and we will unscrew that oh that was actually very very loose <laughs> all right there we go and then we'll go and get our drain tub now a little tip here is if you just have this thing sitting on the floor uh, that going all the way down to the floor tends to splash or whatever so i always just try to give it a little bit of a a lift so now we'll just unscrew this and let's see well, I'm going to come up with a nice escape plan here. There we go. And as you'll notice, it's going to hit the exhaust pipe a little bit, which is no big deal. We can clean that off very easily. I actually do see a cool trick that some guys do. They put uh, aluminum foil on your exhaust pipe, but I, there's no need to do that. I have some like, brake cleaner. I have the Lucas oil uh, degreaser. It will take three, three sprays and a wipe of the rag and just be done. But let's analyze the plug. So there's the plug before we get this thing cleaned up. And that would be after 70,000 miles and nine years of use. That's not bad. <laughs> this is the first time I've done this. Like I say, the book says to do this at uh, 30,000 mile interval. Yeah, I don't see any big chunks. That's what you look for. If you see big chunks in there, be worried. Bunch of shiver, you know, shavings like that. I don't think I'm going to be worried about that. But what we'll do is we'll clean this out. We'll see how much fluid came out. Looks like a nice two, even two quarts. But we'll uh, we'll clean all this stuff off here. So I took a little bit of my parts cleaner and cleaned the plug out pretty good. So you can see that that goes in much farther to where the magnet is here. So there was quite a bit of stuff inside there. But again, I think that since everything is uh, all uniform, I think we're in good shape. Everything looks nominal or reusable. We'll go ahead and put that back in there. Let's do just a quick wipe down with the rag down here. Kind of get, get started on that. So we'll take just a tiny bit of Teflon thread sealant and you put that on there. Doesn't take a ton. Get this started, get this put back in place. Okay, we'll grab our 17 millimeter, open end wrench and just get this nice and tight. And that's all you really need. That's a, that doesn't need to be super tight. You saw how loose that was when we got that off of there. So we're pretty much done on the bottom half of that. All right, now there just seems to be a bit excess hose here. So I'm gonna just cut that a little shorter so there's just less to deal with. There we go. And let's get going. Let's start filling. Feel the burn, ladies, feel the burn. Get all your reps in right now. All your pumping. Let's all, let's, how many pumping jokes can we get in here? <laughs> okay. One bottle down. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Making a bit of a mess. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Wow. 
throttle too. All right, and so then you just fill it to where it starts to come out, and that's how you know you got it to that hole. And then you'll start making a mess. That's to be expected at this point. And then there you have a nice steady bit coming out of the hole. That means you have it filled up to that hole. So we'll go ahead and put our plug in there. Don't need any, I don't put any sealant on that one because there isn't a ton of, uh, of pressure behind that. So what we'll do is we'll just now tighten this plug up. That is all that needs to go. So that took exactly two quarts there to have just that little trickle. That's how I know it's uh, full. That's how I know it's working. And what I'll do now is just wipe this down, give this little bit of a spray with my degreaser here. That'll clean that off. Look at that, not even a trace on the exhaust pipe. So choose whichever works best for you. If you wanna wrap it up like a burrito, that's fine. I'm just gonna just do this and we're good to go. Let's go and look at the fluid that we got out of here and see how bad, if there's anything inside that. That's always a fun thing to check out. All right, so before we get to the forensic analysis part of our video, let's put our tool back together. You just put this literally back inside there and we'll just pound it back into place. Our tool is back and we'll store it here until next time. All right. And finally, we'll just check the oil that came out of here and I'll just root around in here with my fingers and see if there's any more chunks and I don't see or feel anything. It looks pretty good. Now, was this stuff worth $32 a quart as opposed to the $18 the other stuff? I don't think so. So there you go, routine maintenance that'll keep your Jeep on the road longer that you could do yourself. It's super easy, barely an inconvenience, right? Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, enjoy your drive. Yeah. I'm gonna play in this oil for a little while. Ooh, I can see your future.